challenges are very different because we were enslaved. We were colonized. And today, we are victims of neocolonialism. And our answer has to be integration and political unity. So let them do their Brexit. Let them build their walls in America. In Africa, we're going to unify. Back to what do you propose as the role of the Africans abroad, right, who are sending, you know, billions home. So Nigeria, I believe, is 28-something billion. Uh, Ghana, they estimated to be around two or three billion. What is the role of those um, financial flows? Because I definitely agree with you in terms of illicit outflows. And I've been in rooms with partners at PwC in New York City where I've asked them these questions and they dance around it because they know that, as you said, it's not to our benefit. So if this entire room was full of Zimbabweans living in the U.S. or Nigerians in the U.S., what would you say their purpose is as part of this uh, industrial revolution that we've discussed so far? Okay. Thank you very much. The starting point is to say if African descent are the same people. Africans in America, there was a debate yesterday about someone saying, I don't want to be an African-American. You know, call yourself Africans in America. End of story. You are an African resident in America. So you don't have to worry about African-American. Africans in Canada. Africans in the Caribbean. Africans in Brazil. Africans in Argentina. The starting point to your question is to say, I'm an African. And all people of our location. And our destiny are intertwined, inextricably linked. And remember, as I said before, as a black person, as an African, you will never be respected as long as another African is not doing well. I am because we are. We are because I am. Muntu, Muntu, Gabantu. Collective dignity, common humanity. So when you are a Nigerian in New York, when you are a Nigerian in Japan, when you are a Zimbabwean in London, remember you are an African and your destiny is intertwined to the destiny of the continent and its diaspora. So psychologically be clear, you are not a European, you are not a German, you are not a Chinese, you are an African. Once you are clear in your head, then you say, what can I do? Number one, what about linking up Africa with financial investment, link Africa with technology, link Africa with skills. The Africans in America, the Africans in Europe, the Africans in the diaspora have better access to technology, better access to knowledge, better access to finance. Why don't you deploy your influence in pursuit of the African agenda? And by the way, you don't all have to come back to Africa. While you are raised in the New York, while you are in Japan, while you're in London, have Africa on your mind. Like the Jews do. The Jews are on Wall Street, they're in Hollywood, but they have Israel on their minds. The Chinese are everywhere, they've got China on their minds. The Indians are everywhere, but they've got India. On, it's only the African who's got something else on his mind. I'm not sure what it is. So it's very important that you understand the psychology and then the means. Once you're clear psychologically, Look at finance, look at technology, look at skills. And the beauty about the fourth industrial revolution is that you can wear, but the rest must stay wherever they are and help Africa from that place. And always remember that as an African American, to use that term, you will never be respected unless and until the African continent is doing well. Okay? They always say, ah, oh, you're an exception. How come in disarray? They will devalue your superstardom. They will devalue your capacity and your impact. As an African on the continent, also you on the continent, you are judged by the ghettos of America. Those prisons which are black. If you are that clever, how come the ghettos in America are black? How come the prisons are 50% black? We must think about it as our collective success or collective failure. And then we can make out solutions, innovation and other things, entrepreneurship and so on and so forth. Thank you. Nkrumah, first uh, Prime Minister of Ghana. And he, he basically put on the line 
his own leadership and was willing to give it up for the sake of a united Africa. Obviously, you've spoken with a lot of passion here. I have never heard of any leader of any African nation speaking about this issue, even though they have signed this agreement with a modicum of the passion that you have shown us today. So, so do you really believe that these leaders who have signed these agreements really believe what they're doing and uh, would they be willing to put their leadership on the line to advance a united Africa? I don't, I haven't seen it yet. i like to see it. If you can share some light on this for us, I would be very appreciative. Thank you. Thank you, my brother. It's a major concern of mine. It's a major problem, Ambassador. These leaders, union, were integrated. They come to Addis Ababa twice a year and then go back business as usual. I am concerned, just as you are, because I see them go through the motions of signing documents they don't believe in. That's why I was very crude and harsh on Nigeria. Atlanta, Georgia, Georgia as a state, could be a nation on their own. Have a representative at the UN. So the American system and American people gave up on California being a country. Gave up on Georgia being a country to achieve the United States of America. I'm an African. I agree with you. I'm an African woman. What I say now, uh, 40 years, f uh, 400 years ago, we were forced to go out of Africa. Now what we say, we see in the world, what we see in Europe, what we see about, we see our children that forced to be out of this country, the colonist country. We have our, uh, our children that, that, that dying to go out of their Africa. What can we do? Because we will be the only one in Africa. We will decide. What can we do to say to them that they have a country, that they have a, a continent that we can give us to, to something to, to do. They have, will have work, they, are, they will have uh, health, they will have family, they will grow up. What can we do now to do it? Because it's not uh, acceptable not to say something about this. We must get together. I agree with you for Pan-Africanism of Kwame Kuruma. Now our children are dying and we must do something. Thank you so much. Very tough issue, very sad issue. You know, a shared African economic prosperity. We've got to make sure we have inclusive economic growth so that our children don't die on the high seas pursuing prosperity in Europe, pursuing prosperity in America. It's really sad to have Africans trying to get away from the continent and dying in the process. It makes my heart bleed. That's why we need to make sure we work on innovation and entrepreneurship to drive economic prosperity. That's why we need to work on the fourth industrial revolution to deliver economic prosperity. That's why we need to work on contender integration and political unity so that we're prosperous as Africans and there's no need to die on the high seas going to Europe. You know what people have been saying, joking about this in a very nasty manner. They're saying that, ah, well, those ships that came in 1619, to take people forcibly from Africa. If they are to come today, people will run to the ships. I mean, think about it. I mean, we, we, we talk about people being captured and pushed on, put in chains. People are saying now, if those ships were to come today and say, hey, we're looking for slaves, they'll just park there and Africans will run into the... It's sad. We, and and I, I have no answers to that. I'm just saying it's a very sad narrative. 
and the African must feel ashamed and work together and produce shared economic prosperity so that we don't have to die on the high seas in pursuit of prosperity in Europe. But it's a challenge.